Well, well, well. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good middle of the night, wherever you are. Welcome to the Inspired Mind Podcast. It's your friends, Ted, William, and Isidro. And we're just hanging out today. Um, it's a nice, uh, I don't know, midweek morning. And we're just talking about this. The, first of all, um, the name of this podcast is the Inspired Mind Podcast. And when I was thinking about jumping on here today with my colleagues and, and really asking some questions and having some conversation, I really, this, this thought came into my mind, guys. It's like, all right, so we call it the Inspired Mind Podcast. Let's talk today about something that has or is inspiring us. Something that's inspired you or maybe something you're drawing inspiration from today. I'll go first. Thank you. Um, yeah, so please do. One of, one of my points of inspiration, uh, I think we all know and all share a common love for great coffee. So I went into my uh, one of my little favorite coffee shops here in uh, downtown Oklahoma City, Clarity Coffee, and shout out to those guys today. Steve, thanks for all you guys do. Um, they had to they had to close down during um, sort of the lockdown. They didn't have to, but they made the choice to uh, for the safety of their employees and the safety of their customers. And you know they're in a downtown zone, which means kind of downtown kind of emptied out here. And uh, when everybody went, you know, work from home, well, last week they opened up and naturally I said, I'm going to go patronize my local coffee shop. Love the work those guys do. They have, uh, they own a roastery, so they roast their own and all that. But I went in there and I'm like, you know, I, I just, I'm buying a $4 cup of coffee. Granted, it's amazing, but there's probably another, you know, way that I can support their business. And I looked over and they had these brand new coffee mugs sitting mm -hmm. over there. Nice. Now, one of the things about Clarity Coffee is they pride themselves on the ability to roast and craft and sort of cultivate coffee in such a way that it has almost like this impeccable quality of clarity to it. Mm. Nice. And so knowing them like I do, I'm like, hey, guys, I don't know what, what's up with your new mugs, but I want one. And so I bought one of the new Clarity Coffee mugs. And I got to tell you guys, this is going to sound bizarre. I'm sorry. It sounds almost like one of those things that people get into and go to conventions over. But um, this has the most pleasurable feel to me, just the way it's ergonomically designed, flat on top, flat mm -hmm. handle on top, where it curves and the way my hand fits it, holds it. It, it, it literally makes the experience of sipping a great cup of coffee more enjoyable to me and so my thought today goes who was inspired to craft a great mug to hold your coffee i mean to me that's inspiring that people even sit around and go i'm going to really design a, a well crafted mug i just i'm inspired by that that's really cool that is really cool. I was, I was actually, you know what that just reminded me of is chef's knives. I was, I was listening to a thing on NPR about this guy that was wanting to become a master and he was an apprentice for a knife guy and he wanted to create these knives for chefs and how much time he spent with chefs watching the way that they cut things, how many hours a day they're spending cutting things and the way that they hold the knife, where they apply pressure on the knife and how many renditions he's gone through to become like this sought after knife um, maker. He, all of his blades, all of his knives are made by hand, but it's about that balance and having the right amount of balance and the way that it feels on your hand ergonomically. And the same thing with a coffee cup. It was like mind blowing until the moment that you just mentioned it. I never thought about, look at this frumpy little guy. I never thought about a perfectly balanced cup that feels perfectly, like, it just feels like it's a part of you. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, and the reason that I thought about it this week morning as a point of inspiration was because we were all sitting here before, before we hit record. All three of us had a unique coffee cup that we were drinking from. And I know from each of you guys that each of those coffee cups has some sort of significance to us, whatever it is, right? I just got it, but I love it. And I, part of the reason I love it is because I love clarity and those guys, part of the reason I love it is because it feels so great in my hand. 
part of the reason I love it is because whoever sat around and thought this thing up was operating under a moment of inspiration. It's just weird, isn't it? I mean, it's, it is. that's it's inspiring. For me, that's a thing that I, that I think is interesting about what you're saying, Ted, is it's not that you now have a coffee cup in your hand that somebody actually thought of. It's why did they think about it? What was it that they experienced that made them go, man, there's got to be a different way or a better way. And so it's that idea of, you know, you don't have to be accepting or pleased or satisfied by the status quo. You know, my, my, there's nothing really ergonomic about my mug when it comes to drinking coffee, although I will say it is flat and it does sit nice and it's, you know, at the bottom weighted, but you know, th this is a much older design, you know? And so that's that stuff that I find inspiring about, you know, looking at the way things used to be done and then moving through the way things are done now. Um, you know, you're talking about, you went from coffee and then a cedro, you went to chef's knives. I found myself last night, I was, I was uh, doing some research and I came across a YouTube video from a, a group called the Bearded Butchers. And it's a family owned um, butcher shop in Ohio. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to suggest anybody go out and, and watch this video if you're uncomfortable with that idea. But it was about him essentially breaking down half a beef and using a six inch knife. And watching this guy use this knife to turn a side of beef into filet mignon was amazing. And he was like, well, this used to be a six inch knife, but I've used it so much and I've sharpened it so much that now it's not six inches. And I mean, it was, you know, a tiny little knife and you're like, oh my goodness, look at what he's doing. Like, it's amazing. And, you know, it's like, I like beef and I like steak and I like coffee, but there's this whole other part of, of that thing that I find inspirational. It's, it's where my knowledge ends. I'm inspired by what's on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. What don't I know? Mm -hmm. You know, and now it's like, oh, now I want to learn more about, you know, how, how, how did that come to be that, you know, that you, that mm -hmm. that's the way you break this down. And, and you, you have this steak because somebody figured out, oh, if you, if you, you know, take it, do this, you end up with that, you know? So I, I yeah, it's, you know, I think, um, I think, you know, one of my Clifton strengths, which I know you're, um, certified for that. Uh, and, and we had to do for one of our clients is learner. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, that constantly seeking out those things that I don't know, I find that inspiring. And I would say recently, um, the, you know, I have a, a one-year-old who's just learning to walk and he's just figuring himself out. And as a leader of people, that's inspiring to me because I can see how he'll need something different than my other two kids. Because mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. already at one different than both of them. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, so that's, that's been inspirational for me lately is, is trying to figure out, okay, how do I meet people where they live and figure out what do you need from me? Uh, and then what can I learn beyond my own barriers today? I love it. I love it so much. I was, I was reading some from a report from my friends over at the Neuro Leadership Institute who do a remarkable job of helping us understand how the way our brains are wired or have the capability to rewire drives all of our behaviors. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we have this thing in, in sort of the business corporate development space today called you know fixed mindset versus growth mindset yeah and they just uh, recently did a, a, a great white paper on the value of organizations developing a growth mindset and to your idea around this William I, I'm with you it's like of, of, of all the things that I know or I think I know uh, how quickly the older I get the more uh, I'm aware of how finite my knowledge bank is and yet, if we adopt that posture of a growth mindset, 
which says, uh, there, you know, I really don't know most of what there is to know about there, you know, out there. I, I remember it like this definitive shift for me when, when, um, you know, you know, most of my life, like you guys, I've been at some level paid to be the expert. And so you had to show up and it, at the very least, if you didn't know the answer, you had to pretend like you knew the answer, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> pull it off with confidence or whatever. And I remember like this shift where it's like, okay, I, you know, I knew I didn't know everything, but I had to pretend like I did. And then there was a shift that's like, I actually now know that I don't know everything and I'm okay that I don't know everything. And I'm okay acknowledging to you that I don't know everything. And then there's this next shift where you go, actually, I don't know very much at all. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I, I love that. I love the idea that organizationally we can lead people you know, through that process of becoming learners and, and recognizing that we can all evolve and learn and grow. Um, I just, I love that. I love the world in which we live in today. And I love, I think even especially at this time, you know, in the middle of uh, COVID-19 lockdown as organizations are trying to figure out what's our next move, what's our next play to, to adopt a growth mindset rather than a fixed yeah. mindset. It's going to be the key to survivability, probably not just for some companies, but for some industries as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that book by Carol Dweck is a fantastic book if somebody has not read it on the difference between a growth and a fixed mindset. And I actually was a person who had a fixed mindset for a very long time. And I carry the same story around as the reason for why I wasn't doing things or uh, being more of myself. And then I looked at myself in the mirror one day and I just realized I can't continue to carry this story around. I need to do justice. So what inspires me, um, I have this wall over here and I have my grandfather who's passed away now. Um, I have my, my kids, I have, you know, my, my nanny who um, has also passed away. And I have, so I have a few people that I know that I can turn to when I'm mm -hmm. feeling down and I can just look over here and look at what inspires me. My grandfather is, was a great and beautiful man. And I'm just inspired by the hard work that he put in and the dedication that he put into his family. Um, I read a quote by John Maxwell just a couple of days ago that I reshared on LinkedIn. And it was, organizations are not limited by their opportunity. They are limited by their leader. And in this time, specifically in this COVID-19 world, this pandemic world that we live in, um, it's amazing to see how some companies um, you know, some companies can't help it, but how some companies, like you, you mentioned, your, the coffee company that you go to reopened up. Michelle yesterday was talking about this company that's a craft brewer and how they've created a craze almost. They're coming out with a new flavor every week, and that's created this mass offering. And for each flavor, they have a T-shirt for it. And so they sell out every week because people want some sort of normalcy. And so people get excited. And so these marketing ideas that they're infusing into them and they're able to come up with ways to pivot during this time. And, um, you know, Simon Sinek was talking about this upscale restaurant in New York City and they offered upscale Italian food. And then this thing happened. And so instead of firing their waiters, what did they do? They quickly pivoted and provided the same upscale experience to their customers through takeout. And so mm -hmm. all of their waiters are now packaging up food and they had to know how to work the order taking. And so they quickly pivoted and changed gears to be able to continue to provide this very upscale, high-end Italian food experience to their customers. And so what inspires me is just seeing the resiliency, the persistence, seeing people that are able to take what seems to most people to be nothing and to create something beautiful out of it and be like, wow, how did you come up with that? And some, to some of us, it's very obvious, like in the movie Cocktail, where they were talking about the little umbrella on a cocktail, right? Or a flugel binder. What is a flugel binder? It's a little piece of plastic on the end of your shoelace. Who would have thought that that would have been such a groundbreaking invention? Yeah. And so I'm inspired by people who see everyday things and like what William was talking about is like, sometimes you go buy something, but one day you see it in a completely different way yep. where it's like, wow, that, that could really be a great idea. And then you action on that idea and you take one step in front of the other because everyone has great ideas and you know, the graveyard's full of them, but it's yep. what, when people take action to those ideas and are able to do something 
that inspires me. And that, and that is what I seek every day is something a little bit inspirational. Um, Zig Ziglar says motivation doesn't last, but neither do showers. So we recommend it daily. Yeah. So I try to find daily inspiration in things. <laughs> it's man, there's so much to react to in there, Asidro, and what you said, right? But so I'll kind of go backwards and then come forwards. You're saying, you know, you walking down the street and it's like for, for all of your life, you pass this one thing and you've seen it in a certain way. And then one day, boom, you see it differently. That's the shift from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. Your mind has to be open to seeing it. I had that experience when I was much younger too. And I, I, I told myself, you have to be open to the most insignificant things creating the most significant moments and opportunities in your life. I'm, I'm reading a book right now called The Power of Moments, right? And you're talking about like this craft brewery. So I'm trying to work backwards from everything that you said. This craft brewery and how they're creating moments. They're manufacturing moments. We have a special, we do something about it. We have a shirt, we create a shirt. It creates this moment that people get excited about. And then you're on to the next thing, right? That goes into that idea of, of things being viral because it's a moment and you have to be there at that moment. It's like, um, uh, you know, um, what is it called? you like when all of a sudden you're in the mall and people just start dancing, right? You know, it's like that thing, like you flash know, mob, flash mob. It's like, you have to be there. It's a moment and then it's gone, you know, but if you walked away, if you turned your back and walked away, you would have missed that moment. So you have to be open to your moments. You know, I, I believe with all my heart that I am with my wife because I created a mindset of, looking for something beyond the insignificant. When I met my wife, it could have been one of those times where it was just a insignificant moment and you move on to it and it becomes nothing else. And it's become one of the greatest things in my life. And if I move further back to what you were saying about your parents, you can go back to like, or your dad, you can go back to like Tony Robbins, right? Where he says that story that you told yourself for all those years, it served you in a way. You know, if I look at my dad, I, you know, I, when I look at my dad when I was a kid, I would say, man, my dad was a great provider, but he was a horrible parent, you know, and, and I was embarrassed by my dad at times in my life. And eventually he became a man that I was really proud of and, and wanted to emulate. And, and that's because he changed his mindset. Um, at one point, he actually earned an award that is given to volunteers. It's a, it's a national award. And he was the highest honored volunteer in the United States for work that he does volunteering his time. Now, if you would have told me when I was 10 that my dad was going to win this award, I would have bet your life on it that it would have never happened in a million years. But he changed his mindset. And I went through something similar. And I remember having a conversation with uh, my, older my older brother, Gus, one time, who's kind of a conspiracy theorist. Um, and, and we were having, uh, we were in Austin one year, we were having a dinner um, at the, uh, the spaghetti uh, warehouse that was in Austin. Uh, and, he, you know, he's one of those people, he's like me, he gets passionate and he starts to get loud and he starts to get big. Uh, and I said, hey, man, I'll have this conversation with you, but I don't think everybody in here wants to have this conversation. Right. And then he came to visit us uh, one year and we were having a conversation and we were talking about what's going on in the world. And I said, look, I have a family that I have to provide for. You know what I mean? And so I have to think about the things that go through my head and how they serve me. And I said, so let's, you know, these, these conspiracy theories that you have, that you spend energy and time and effort on them, how do they serve you? What do they do for you? Mm -hmm. What's the story? that you're telling yourself that if you could overcome this thing, it would do something for you, right? Whatever that is. And that story doesn't have to be a conspiracy theory that's global. It can be your own conspiracy theory. I'm being held down by this, or I'm being overlooked for that, or, you know, this is my story. That story serves you. And if that story doesn't serve you in the direction that you want to move, you need to tell yourself a different story, you know? And, and, you know, you come full circle on that. Now it's like, now my wife will actually talk to my brother because he won't try to make it all about conspiracies, you know? And like, it's like, oh, Gus wants to come visit? Absolutely. Have him like come. The kids love him. You know, yes. And he doesn't, he actually, it was interesting. I knew that I had created some value in his life, which um, for me, as y'all know, is huge. Uh, I love to be able to create value for other people. It, that, um, serves my heart and my Close story. Yeah. 
And uh, we were having a conversation and my dad said something to him and he said, yeah, that just doesn't serve me anymore. And it was like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, but that's a thing. It's like, you know, that story that you tell yourself, what, how does it serve you? You know? And, 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 and so tell yourself a better story. Yep. You know, that's rich. So. That's rich. Yeah, that's good. I was, uh, I don't know if you guys got to see it or not uh, this past week, but Kevin Kelly came out with 68 things he's learned in life. He's uh, the co-editor for the, for Wired Magazine. Just a brilliant guy, futurist guy, and um, really great uh, article that he wrote. <clears throat> I think he actually was so popular that he came back and put it on video. So it's, it's a, it's a nice uh, it, quick read. And one of those things, you know, that you kind of like, aha, but uh, to this whole idea of being, you know, sort of curious with the moment that we're in and putting ourselves in that position to reshape our story and to come to understand something differently than we currently understand it, or mm -hmm. even, you know, believe something differently than we currently believe it. Um, he, one of his quotes was, don't be afraid to ask the question that may sound stupid because 99% of the time, everyone else is thinking of the same question. They're just too embarrassed to ask it. Yep. Uh, you know, and, and I think that's true. Even as you said, William, of our own story, it's like, I actually need to ask myself the story that I'm telling myself right now. One, you know, is it true? Two, does it serve me? You know, and there's probably a three, but I can't think of one right now. But I think it's a, I think it's a great point of growth when we're willing to, um, in the words of uh, one of my coaches, be ruthlessly honest with yourself and uh, ask the, the hardest questions of yourself in those moments of growth. Love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Absolutely. And um, two, two really good books on this topic about growth, because I, for one, I was getting like, I was getting I, I get angry at my kids. I was, I had a short fuse and I, and I kept saying, telling people well, my anger stems from my, I've never gone to a psychologist or a psychiatrist about the anger that I have from my father kind of. So I was using that as the excuse because I kept carrying that story around. But then I started digging deeper and one, the first book I read was Switch On uh, Your Brain by Dr. Caroline Leaf. And she talks about neuroplasticity and how your brain has the ability to create new cells every single day. And you have the ability to rewire your brain. Um, and then Dr. Joe Dispenza, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. He's got several others as well. But you know, one of the things is uh, Caroline does a great job of providing you a step-by-step 21-day -step detox to breaking habits of breaking toxic thoughts. What are those toxic thoughts? Like you were talking about William, how do they serve you? She's doing the same thing where you write down and there's a, it's probably nine minutes a morning or seven minutes a morning that you spend going through this process of rewiring one thought at a time. What is this negative thought of like, I could never do that. Or, um, you know, I can't never lose weight. I'm just big boned or I can't, you know, all of these things that people tell themselves, they start carrying these stories around of what their limitations are. And then having reinforcements that they've created over time on why those limitations are real. One of those things that inspires me is um, I'm you guys know I'm training for a half Ironman. Um, my, my coach is my wife's cousin and um, he was just on the news in Orlando because one of the people that he's training um, is special needs. He's um, down syndrome and um, he specifically is the first person to ever complete a half Ironman first down syndrome person to ever complete a half Ironman, 70.2 miles. He did the swim, he did the run, he did the bike. He didn't set limitations for himself. And he started getting frustrated because, you know, first of all, his parents were always kind of protecting him, overprotecting him. You know, he's now 19 years old, he's going to manhood and he's, he was getting frustrated that everyone was putting limitations on what he could accomplish. And then he saw something about an Iron, Ironman competition. He wanted to do that. My wife's cousin is an Ironman coach in Orlando. And so they connected the two together. And the story is just beautiful. And now he's training for a full Ironman, 140 miles. Wow. There's 100% fully capable in every way people that are putting limitations on themselves on why they couldn't do things. And this young man like I was like, I had goosebumps when I watched the article and then I met him and I talked to him and I was like, 
Chris, you're amazing. I'm so inspired by what you're doing. And, and he's like, I can't wait to do the full Ironman. And he was out there. I was swimming with him in the lake and I was running next to him. And I was just, I was just, I was just blown away by his tenacity, his resilience and, you know, people like that, that overcome the odds and like reading stories like that or meeting people like that. Um, you know, Tony Robbins bring this guy, Nick, that lives in Tampa. Um, he doesn't have legs. He doesn't have arms. He's got a, like one finger. And he talks about um, basically he's a power lifter. How is he a power lifter with a, this much of an arm? He has one stub here with one finger and no legs, but he's in amazing shape. Um, he's a motivational speaker. He tells a story to people and just things like that. And just finding things like that of people overcoming the odds or people that other people would say, well, you have an excuse not to accomplish anything. Well, no, I don't have an excuse. Nobody has an excuse. You can mm -hmm. do whatever you set your mind to doing. And these are live living examples of people yeah. that do that. And, and that first example, the, like the really powerful part of that first example is if you think about what we've been talking about, we've been talking about having an internal story that's not a good story, right? And here's this kid who's like, it would have been really easy for his internal story to be, I can't accomplish things because nobody believes I can accomplish things. And I've been told that I should limit myself all my life by those people who should be writing my story for me before I'm capable, my parents. Yet something inside of him said, no, I'm not willing to accept that. Yeah. I'm not willing to accept that. That's not going to be my story. Um, I, I know that certainly resonates um, tremendously uh, with me and, uh, and Ted and, you know, and, and man, that's, um, yeah, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. And now, and now a triathlon is going to be in the special Olympics games in this next year for the first time wow. ever, they're going to put a triathlon in the, in the special Olympics games. And it's because of how big this story has gotten with this kid that completed an iron, an Ironman competition. Um, it's just, it's, it's like, i I was talking to my kids the other day and um, I was talking to my wife and she said, she just made a comment like, or my, my son made a comment. He's like, w you're one person. What can you, what are you going to change or something like that? And I said, well, did Martin Luther King have that same belief of like, what does one person get to do? And the same thing with this kid that has now completed that, like he's having an impact and you know, we don't know who he's going to inspire and motivate. And now you have triathlon as part of the special Olympics games coming up next year. It's, I mean, it's just, there's just so much inspiration out there. And so that's why I was so excited to do this podcast with you guys, because there's so many different topics we talk about, but mm -hmm. finding things that inspire you, having something that changes your mindset from things are the way they are because the way they are, I can't do anything. I'm going to just let my beliefs, let my mind control me to going out of your way to rewire your brain, to find inspiration, to find motivation, and to have that fuel you to what could your fully realized version of yourself accomplish if you were fully lit on fire? If failure wasn't possible and if tomorrow isn't promised, which it's not, today's the present, what are you gonna do today and what can you accomplish what is your purpose? Ted, I know you've had a hard time jumping back into this, but I just, uh, I'm going to ask you a question and I'm going to uh, make a statement to Isidro. So um, Isidro, I think a great video for you to show your son who said, what can one person do? Cause it's kind of funny and it's kind of campy, but it makes such a great point. Uh, and, and that leads to the question for you. Have you or, and, and yourself as well as Isidro ever seen the video about leadership lessons from a dancing man? I don't think so. Oh, yes. Okay. So it's, it's one guy at a music festival Dancing in like Canada. It's like Bonnaroo or Lollapalooza, like a big music festival. And he gets up and he's dancing. And he, I mean, like, and he's not dancing like, you know, yeah, I'm cool. He's like, yeah, going. And he keeps going and keeps going. And you can hear people watching and giggling and like laughing at him. And all of a sudden the tipping point comes and one other person joins him. Mm -hmm. And so it talks about, it's not the leader. It's the first follower. You have to inspire somebody to the point that somebody will, will, will come and join you. And the moment number two jumps in, then three and four come and then 10, and then pretty soon everybody around this guy is dancing. And, cool. and that's the power of one person that's willing to have conviction in what it is that they're doing. You know, I mean, that's the power of a leader 
is, is he had enough conviction that he didn't care people were laughing. He didn't care that people were maybe making fun of him. He did it until somebody said, you know what? I'm going to follow that dude. And as soon as one other person jumped in, tipping point, mm -hmm. everybody else jumped in. And so, you know, you mentioned Martin Luther King, right? Because you can go Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. And, you know, I, I mean, you could just start rattling off all of the people, and, you know, and it, you, you have to reach this sort of, you know, terminal mass where you get that tipping point. Um, and I, I mean, I think that's inspirational as well is, you know, what does it take to actually create change? Yeah. You know, well, it's a great time to be living. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of sources for inspiration to all of us out there, especially right now, there's people, you know, going above and beyond to meet the needs of humanity around them. And so, uh, man, I just, I hope that if you if you currently are in need of inspiration, you will look around you, maybe with a new set of eyes, maybe a new lens, and you might find it in something as, you know, seemingly magnificent as a special needs young man that determines he's going to do it. And he makes something happen that's never happened before. Or maybe you find inspiration in something as, as basic as a new a coffee, coffee cup. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, cause, uh, I think, I think you guys are, I mean, I think we would all, every, all of us would know that f inspiration is a fundamental human need. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we all need hope. It's one of those elements that compels us forward as human beings and, you know, can't literally, really live a day without it. You got to believe in what's ahead and, and that there is something beautiful and good that lies ahead. So, yeah. man, glad to be on the journey with you guys. Yeah. Hey, um, I, it, I feel like we're wrapping up. And before we do, I want to, I just want to share something because, you know, we, we come on here and we talk about, oh, you know, read this book and do this thing and have this mindset. And yeah, you know, and it, if you get the, if you're, if your perception is, oh, these guys, they got it all together. It's easy for them. They're on target. You know, allow me to share with you that Sunday was a wasted day for me. Like, you know, yes, it's the story that you tell yourself. Yes, you have to continually reinforce it. Like Isidro said, you know, it was, we recommend like a shower. You got to take it every day. But there's going to be days that are just hard. That's you know, right. on Sunday, um, you know, leading up to Sunday, we had, you know, we had some, some, uh, some, some business um, outcomes that were not the outcomes that I wanted. And, and so, you know, that, that failure settled in me in a way that while it wasn't my failure, I allowed it to on Sunday, um, create a negative space within me. And I, and I got mad about what that failure was. Um, and, and it, to the point that I was, I was mad about that, but then what happened was I got mad about being mad. And it was like a circular reference in Excel. I could not pull myself out of this cycle of being angry about being angry about being angry. <laughs> and I just, and it, I just allowed it to sort of fester in myself. Um, and I'll tell you, it was, uh, it was, it was literally, I had to leave. I had to get out of the house. I was like, I got to get this negative energy out of the house and, and away from uh, the family and the kids and find a space for it. And I came, I ended up coming home at one point and I went upstairs and my kids were up there and um, my wife had told me, you know, Tallulah, you know, was saying, you know, daddy's mad. And so I'm going to be mad too, you know? And, and that of course was like, Oh, uh, but then she did something. She came to me and she said, um, so daddy, she said, when you're feeling really mad, like you want to roar, take a deep breath and count to four. And it was, Dan it was Daniel Tiger. And I was just wow. like, and man, and that, that was the moment that I needed. Mm -hmm. And had I not removed myself, had I not isolated myself, but had I, had I sought out community with people like Ted and Isidro or with my family or with my three-year-old, mm -hmm. that connection could have broken that cycle that I was in quicker than trying to do it on my own. Mm. Yeah. You know, so if, if you're challenged... Yep. And, and, and we talk about grace and look, I'm saying I did not have grace with myself. 
Um, you know, so if you're, if you're experiencing some challenges and if you're having some difficulties, you know, don't think that you got to go through it alone because sometimes that will just lead to even greater challenges because yeah. you'll start telling yourself the wrong story. Mm-hmm. Reach out to some people, reach out to us, reach out to a friend, reach out to a stranger, um, you know, find somebody to talk to. Mm-hmm. So, or, uh, and if you want, you can come talk to my three-year-old daughter. <laughs> Clearly the keeper of wisdom. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. So, yeah, great story, William. Thanks for your vulnerability, your authenticity. It's great value and uh, appreciate that. Uh, listen, I hope you guys have a great week ahead. You, um, are, you've inspired me today, as you always do. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to get to partner with both of you, not only in business, but in life. And uh, hopefully you took away something today by listening or viewing this podcast that inspires you not only to um, go to your own next level of capability, but maybe to also serve as an inspiration for the person sitting next to you or standing behind you coming along uh, their own path that may need exactly what you're offering. So guys, well done. Always enjoy it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Ted. Thanks for creating some clarity for us today. (laughs) Absolutely. My pleasure. (laughs) See you guys. Bye.